This is Dr. Conrad Miller reporting to you on the Fukushima happenings in Japan. Uh, the latest is that the milk and the spinach is tainted with radiation, contaminated with radiation from the areas around the plant in Fukushima in Japan, which means that uh, you don't want to eat that food too much. Uh, it didn't get some other plants yet and crops, but we'll see what happens. That stuff's still coming out, and there's going to be meltdowns, and there's going to be probably more fuel pool fires if they can't make that cable work to get those other generators to work, to make the pumps work to cool the plants that are remaining. So there's all those radionuclides. And remember, a few days ago, it was reported that there was radiation detected on some of the shoes of some of the reporters in the area. What does that mean? Well, that means maybe it was in the air. Maybe they inhaled some. They're not breaking it down to tell you which radionuclides are in the radiation. They're just telling you it's detectable. Remember, it only takes a millionth of a gram of plutonium to be inhaled into your lung to cause lung cancer. You won't die for a little, maybe 10, 20, 30 years, but that can happen. It just takes a millionth of a gram, teeny, weeny, 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 weeny bit. There's a million micrograms in just one gram, and there's 44, 54 grams in a pound. And the Japanese have this heritage of shunning people who are contaminated with radiation as they did for the A-bomb survivors from Nagasaki and Hiroshima in 1945 because they were worried about the genetic codes and the mutations that were result of the babies that were born and the birth defects. So those people actually had a name they were called Hibu, Hibakusha, Hibakusha. And they still probably hide their backgrounds today, many of them. They, they didn't tell their wives that they ended up marrying and uh, they had their kids. Hopefully not too many had birth defects, but I'm sure plenty of, of them did. And that heritage is going to go on now with this next generation here from Fukushima. And people don't even want to go in there because they're afraid of getting contaminated with radiation. I don't blame them. So it's the Hibakusha all over again in 2011. And planes aren't landing in Tokyo. You don't want to really eat the food, do you? It comes out of there because they don't export too much. But could get into the planes, the radiation, just a little microgram of plutonium can do it. With those fuel pool fires, the, um, all the inventory of possible radionuclides produced by fissioning uranium went, went up into the air. Maybe not that much yet. They're monitoring. We don't really know how much to trust this. There's supposed to be a Sevastopol independent monitoring group in California that probably is more reliable than what you're getting so far. But so far, so good. But the first real wave of more heavy contamination is supposed to reach California, California until March 22nd to March 24th. Just remember also that we say in the nuclear power industry, it can't happen here. No, no. Those plants are different. Well, the truth is we have 23 of the same Mark I General Electric plants in America. We have 104 plants, 23 of them on Mark 1s. So it can't happen here. And uh, Diablo Canyon, for example, was built in California right on an earthquake fault, three miles from the center of it. So how crazy is that? So we like technology. We like to rationalize about it. It's just great. But the, everything has a yin and a yang. Yeah, nuclear power has incredible power to produce electricity, but incredible power to contaminate the Earth for many, many years. Remember, Chernobyl right now is about 985,000 deaths premature so far, according to uh, research done on many, many articles put together by Alexei Yablokov and published by the New York Academy of Sciences. Nuclear power is not really safe and clean, is it? Now you know. You're seeing it. Dr. Conrad Miller, signing off.